You are listening to the Feedback Podcast with my homie Back. All right. Welcome to the Feedback Podcast, everybody. My name is Back, and we're here live at Mohawk 10th Anniversary. Congrats. Shout out to the staff. Shout out to everybody who put this thing together. And today I have the pleasure and the honor to speak to the one and only Magna Carta. How y'all doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. good. <laughs> Pretty good. You know what? Last time y'all performed here, y'all sold out the spot. True. Right? Am I yes, right? Yes, we did. Yeah. Yes. And I wanted to come and then sold out and then I caught y'all at the Hard Luck Lounge like a couple days later or the next day or something like that. True. Yes. Dope show. Dope show. Um, and now look at you. You're opening for Jizza and doing yeah, a blowing up all over the place. Making moves. Huh? True. Yeah, I need a nah, mic. Nah, it's, Mike, it's, get the mic, hey, Mike. Mike, put, the, put that mic on your face, man. <laughs> nah, nah, but it's, it's for real. It's a get dream close to it. It's a dream come true, man. Uh, Wu-Tang, I, I think I can speak for all of us. Wu-Tang is a heavy, heavy uh, influence on our music. Yeah, okay. real talk. I'm a Wu-Tang fanatic. I'm oh. in English listening to Wu-Tang. That's how, that's yeah, how well yeah. I know. I'm going to be out there rapping along every single lyric, and Jess is going to be like, all right, you have the mic. I'm going to go take a break. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> So one, one thing I like to get into on the podcast is the backstory. Um, where are y'all from? Do you have any training? I mean, you're all musicians. Uh, you're a songwriter. Mm-hmm. Um, so how did y'all grow up in, uh, you know, the, the dad with the record collection or in choir in high school? Like, what, what's, what's the backstory there, Dougie? Uh, for me, it's my grandfather bringing a... He was a DJ in the Air Force, so... He DJ just, in the Air Force? Yeah, DJ in the Air Force. Air Force got a DJ? Yeah. Woo! I didn't know that, so he was bringing the beats Turn to the parties up. and all that. So Good he morning, just had, Vietnam, bitch. What's <laughs> that? <laughs> <laughs> he just had records laying around, and then that's how I kind of got into all the music, though. So uh, what, what, about, what about you, Megs? Uh, For me, I was just kind of following behind my dad, who is heavy in the music in the church, and he played the keyboard and sang, and uh, he's also a songwriter, so just kind of following behind his footsteps, and being in a city, I'm from New Orleans, so being in a city where it's like nothing but music is kind of not hard to get. (laughs) So everybody here, you got a musical background, like... Yeah. Uh, Derek, you, you were in a band at uh, uh, high my, school? My mom was the orchestra director at See, high man, school. y'all got these crazy ass parents. You know I didn't know yeah, that. I didn't know that. It's really, like talented I families. I didn't have a choice for a while. But my dad can't play shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I played the cello for like 12 years, and then I switched the bass. Wow. What about you, Mike? The drums? Yeah, I actually, I, I started playing percussion and drums when I was 12, and then did the whole middle school, high school program, and uh-huh. I didn't touch the kit till I was a, a senior in high school. So yeah, I've been playing drums for what, about six And then? <laughs> uh, but uh, my first instances with music, my dad was a, was a country music DJ in South Texas. Country music Holy DJ? Country. Well, hold on, hold on. Those, those are two either. words. Yeah. Two oh, country music country. DJ. Yeah, what is that yeah. like? Do he scratch? Uh, I mean, I, I, have, I have all my, my dad Wait, gave me all Y'all didn't know? No. no. <laughs> I never, I'm not, I, he's I a told border him. agent, right? Yeah, huh? He's also on, like, oh, he's a, yeah, he's a U.S. Customs and Border Patrol. Uh, but I, what's the country music that's DJ? That's what I thought. So, when, when he was younger, this, I mean, this oh, was yeah, way before. Oh, yeah, because you were saying you got the turntables from him and his friend. So, yeah, 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 he so was I, talking so about that. Actually, I've got a turntable from my dad's best friend. It is a bunch of country records. DJ, <laughs> DJ together. I've but, got an old t- uh, Technics 1200 in the. I mean, was he cutting on country and everything? Nah, he, I mean, he, oh. was, he, was, he was spinning on the radio. And then we oh, played, okay. Oh, DJ on the radio. Yeah, yeah, See, yeah. I'm thinking DJ. Like, like Garth Brooks. Would, yeah. <laughs> Actually, know. shit, I got to talk to him about that. But that'd I, be dope. I, I want to hear that. Be dope, but. <laughs> now I want to hear it. Tell your dad. Yeah. Hey, Mike <laughs> also graduated from the University of Texas. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I, I mean, I've got an education. In I jazz. Went, I did, uh, I I did the music program. I did the jazz program at the University of Texas. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Shout out to Wayne Salzman II. That's my teacher. I wouldn't be here without him. So was there a moment where you decided, all right, this is it. This is what I want to do. Everybody got that moment. No matter what art you're into, you're like, you see somebody or you go to a show, something that makes you, a light bulb goes up and you go, holy shit, I think this is my calling. Do you have that moment? Yeah, I did. Uh, So my dad, my dad was a huge uh, Earth, Wind & Fire fan, like all of us. But my first concert when I was 12 was an Earth, Wind & Fire concert in San Antonio, Texas. And I saw, wow. yeah, I was like the youngest dude there. And my, we had, we had uh, seats on the floor and I went up to the stage 
and the sound, uh, there was like this huge, uh, this big old dude, I guess he was the stage manager or whatever, he brings me up to the stage and uh, the percussionist gave me a stick. And I still have that and he stick went, to this oh! day. Yeah. I, I mean, I've, I I've have the power. Been, I've been <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's how it was, man. And and since then, we've been he's been I've been going to concerts with him. But it was that moment. It's like, all right, cool. Did y'all have the same kind of? Somebody give you a keyboard, threw a keyboard at you, and said, "Hey." <laughs> nah. Uh, well, I'm no. a big Tribe fan. So oh, okay. Q-Tip did a show here in my freshman year at Santa. It's like '08. Uh -huh. And that when he did that, I was like, I left. I was like, yo, I gotta do something musically. Like as soon as I leave this place. I got a set list after it, so uh -huh. I like keep oh, that frame on the wall. Away. So yeah, yeah. A set list. that I was got my a moment. Of it. I like how y'all find, finding out stuff about each other on the show. This is dope. <laughs> what about you, Max? Um, I mean, I've been doing it, uh, writing, and j I'm a writer. That's what I like to like kind of refer to myself as, and um, and I've been doing that since I was a kid. So there was no like particular moment. That I you was were born and that was it. No, that it was, was the moment. That was the moment. <laughs> well, it was like I always knew I was going to be right and I didn't know what. But for music specifically, it probably wasn't even until I, like, probably when we booked our first show and we got off the stage, the, like, not the St. Ed's one, but. <laughs> well, five, five, one, whoa, no whoa, whoa. No is there a story you want to tell about it? I mean, it You'll was. You'll probably get no. to it. you <laughs> Yeah, we'll get to that story. Um, but probably the one we did at 512 Bar and we got off stage and it was man, let's do that again. Like, I was feeling it. <laughs> I was nervous as hell. To but the two people so standing. So you, you were, you yeah, were all beast like, and she was... You it were was like five people, but I was like, I mean, if people going to come, we should keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What about you, D? Well, I'd say the first time I played a good show, I, it, was, it was for, I don't know, it was a while ago uh, in high school. And the crowd enjoyed it. And honestly, just being on stage is intoxicating. So mm -hmm. it was a new type of high. And I always wanted to taste that. It's like just you chase that dragon, baby. Um, <laughs> like I want some more of that. Yeah, honestly, it's, you connect with the crowd. You feel their energy. It, it's kind of weird. And I'm cliche right now. But hey, I just it's there. Feel it. So y'all two met at, at St. Edwards, correct? Entered like a contest or something like that. Or oh, a talent shit. show. We did uh, some talent shows. Oh, I do my homework. I do feedback for you. We did some talent shows. We um, two Lost years in a row. Lost every single one. Lo Are you Wait. serious? No, we, we came in second the second it? time. Though. Wait, was it because of the judges or because of the crowd? Probably the judges. Probably both. Hey. Probably both? Really? <laughs> didn't, didn't I play one with y'all? I played, I played a St. Ed's talent show. No, with that wasn't... Uh, that was a battle of the bands. It was a battle of the bands. When That's Joe the second was time we got second place. Yeah. Yeah, that was the second time. <laughs> yeah. So I was in a, I was in a country band. I had I had no idea who they were, and we showed up and we we're, we're playing country. We got last place. <laughs> Small oh, town. Oh, so yeah, I can feel care. better. Oh no 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 no. It was it was, it was funny, but that was the first that was the first time I had ever had ever heard of Magna Carta, and it's funny because like maybe what a year or two later, I uh, Derek. I, I was in a band with Derek for, um, what was it, about a month, month and a half? Yeah, two months. We maybe? never played a show. Yeah. We, we rehearsed every Monday with we his brother. I was in small towns, yeah. We rehearsed every Monday, every week with his brother for about a month and a half. And I think it was, the, I guess, our last rehearsal. He was like, hey, man, uh, you want to go play a show with Magna Carta? And it was, yes, uh, I did. Yeah, I did, I did one rehearsal, and I won that first show. We, just, we haven't stopped playing. At, at St. Ed's. No, no, no. It was well, after that. But it was because of... Oh, yeah. after that. Yeah, after that. So the, the thing about Austin that... The thing about Austin that uh, it's like a recurring theme with all the artists that I have on the show is that if you're into music and Austin, you're bound to meet, you know, the right people. So you're going to meet the Bavus and the T-Doubles and the Zeely and all those guys and the Rise Against the Storm. And uh, how, how did that happen for y'all? So... Y'all did y'all show at St. Edwards. You figured y'all clicked, and then Magna Carta's born, put something together, put out a mixtape, and then now you're out in the scene. So how do you navigate the scene at the time? Um, at that time, it was kind of like we were trying really hard to get into the hip-hop scene because we were so new. Yeah. So we were out and about like, hey, can I open for you, blah, blah, blah. Can I open for you? But nobody knew who we were, so... We're trying to really hard, and then we and did Chris start. Them jazzy beats. Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah. So we did start trying to open for people, but it was like trap set, yeah. trap set, yep. 
us trap set and we just like never mixed like into any of the flows so we were like i think we got to start like doing our own thing uh -huh. so so that's when we kind of like stepped away and then we started opening for riders against the storm um for a little like when we first started and then um i don't think we ever did a show with like t-double and babu but but you know you guys yeah, got yeah. to meet them yeah in we the met process. yeah 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 we met them um through the scene and that was pretty cool and then zeely comes in and out of town so we know him yeah it's hard to catch uh, zeely yeah, just popped uh, out of nowhere <laughs> hey i'm doing a show right. i'm in town i'm like want a drink Sure. Right. Uh, I'm actually sharing a stage with him tomorrow at uh, yes, KP and Yes, and I will be there. Yeah. I will so, be there. And Zilli, shout, out shout out to, to KP, KP and Boom Boom. Boom. What up, KP? Shout out to Keeper. Keeper, Zilli. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're both playing. So dope, we'll dope. Be out there. But see, I, here, that's the thing. Like, I, you know, you're here in the South, and you're, the sound that you're, the hip hop you're doing is not, I mean, it's not the, 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 the hip hop that, that reigns around here. Yeah. So you're bringing in that, that neo soul vibe and people are like, no, we just want to turn up, you know? And yeah. <laughs> how, did, how did people react at first, you know, coming with the sound that you guys got, you know, and started performing and opening for, 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 for bands where people were like, oh, this is kind of refreshing and cool? Or it's like, oh, I don't know, I just want to do the shoulder press dance and, you know, <laughs> how did that, how that happen? I call it shoulder press dance, that's what it is. I'm doing this all day. We, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was kind of awkward because we didn't know where to go or like who to try to book shows with. So we were on random bills with like EDM music or like straight up indie rock or I don't know. We played with some interesting uh, but that, bands. Th that's not necessarily great, but not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah. So when we went to kind of get into like the hip hop side, like you said, it's like a. It's either like trap or like kind of like more live music and not live like instrumentation, yeah, wise, yeah, but like yeah, live yeah, like we mean. lit. Yeah. Uh, and so we just kind of had a hard, like not a hard time, but just it was kind of awkward navigating it. But it's like now it's like we know who we are and we're we're making it clear to other people what we are and who we are. So whoever wants to rock with us, like. We just gonna rock out now. We used, we used to worry about it a lot, but now it's kind of like we just get you know where you fit in. Yeah, and I guess as we've been playing for what over the past three years, uh, we have extended our song list. So now we can, if we need to turn yeah, up with too. those bands, true. Yeah, we'll play some heavy shit, Fact. and if we need to turn down for those other bands, we can play some soulful. Sensual yeah, shit. Yeah, we switch up the set depending yeah, on... Yeah, and, and, and I think that, you know, to, to your credit, you know, sticking to your, what you believe in and figuring out what your sound is and, you know, maturing with it, I think, I think it's great. Um, you know, Austin Thank is you. still known as we the live music capital of the world, yes, but when you think Austin, it's a dude with a guitar. You know, so you come here with hip hop and people are already like, oh, wait, hold on, it's hip hop. So hip hop means blah, 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 fill in the blank. Everybody knows what those blanks are. And then you're like, oh, well, there's a loophole. We can have instruments, you know, and then still bring, bring our, you know, our, um, our art in front of people. Was that? That's exactly why we did it. That's what happened? That's what happened? That's we found the loophole that's exactly in the system? The, I mean, yeah. We there were you go. trying to book shows and we were literally walking, me and Dougie walking downtown, handing out CDs and nobody really was messing with it. Um, so we were like, well, we'll get a basis. <laughs> then we came with this one thanks, little basis thanks, and it thanks, changed Derek. the game. <laughs> it was done. <laughs> but I mean, the, the fact that you got on random shows with bands like Ume and Digital Wild and, you know, Hard Proof and all these other guys, like now their crowd is getting to see you. So it, it's you're not necessarily collaborating with them, but the fact that you got in front of them, um, not... Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That, that's, exactly yeah, that's, that's what it is. So on the production side, I was trying to figure this out. Um, how, what's the process like? Because you make beats, yeah. right? Singer, songwriter, drums, bass, uh, and then Eric. Is Eric on the Eric. guitar? Uh, we got Eric and Andrew. Yes. Yeah. Andrew. Andrew oh. be playing that. Shout, oh. shout, shout out. Shout out. Shout out. What up? Shout out. Come on, on, the, on the camera and just wave at your mom real quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, nah, he said, I'm on TV. <laughs> not really. It's just Facebook Live. It's not TV yeah. yet. 
But uh, what's that process like? Uh, it really starts me in the garage, and I'll just make something random. And I'm like, I think this is, would be cool if we can all like, get on this. Then I bring it to the group, and then they all decide together, is this something doable, or like, is this, do we need to like, fix stuff like that? Mm -hmm. So then we take the beat, the bare bones of it, then we fill it in like in rehearsals, and then we go to the studio, and I bring the stems, like the already pieced like together stuff, the and then... You bring the what? The stems. Right the stems? Yeah. What are like, that? Like every little piece to a track. We oh. pretty much pick the uh, yeah. track apart yeah. and we oh, okay, redo okay. it yeah. from like yeah. scratch. I'm an idiot. I should know this. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you good. We like so we bring all that stems and then they play. They record live on top of it in the studio and then she adds her magic on top and then voila. Giving out secrets. So, uh, so it starts with you then. Yeah, pretty most much. of the time. Yeah, most, most of the time. time. Yeah. And then if um, do you bring up a certain topic that you want to talk about on your songs? Um, well, well, that's the thing. It kind of differs sometimes because sometimes, like, Mike might come with, like, something and, like, kind of, like, what y'all think? And sometimes Derek will send over a bass line. Um, mm -hmm. And then sometimes I have an idea musically where it's kind of like I want to touch on a certain sample or touch on a certain vibe or feel like, uh, for instance, we were working on, like, <laughs> some bounce music. <laughs> Some couple what? weeks, we were working on some bounce music a couple bounce of weeks music. back. Bounce music. You're from Nola. Why not? Yeah, yeah, but that's something that like Chris wasn't gonna be in there. Like, oh, let me make Why, a bounce. Why, Chris? Track. Why do you want to do bounce? <laughs> like, make a bounce, yo. No, so I, I had, you know, I would be like, yo, you know, I want to try something like this, you know. So sometimes it's like an idea coming mm -hmm. from me, or sometimes it's an idea coming from like one of them. Yeah, and it, 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 what, what's cool with this is that everybody comes from a different background. So like she said, she's from New Orleans. Right. Bounce, I've, I had no idea what that was until she yeah, brought it in. I had to send him an You know what country like, DJing was. Right, 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 exactly. <laughs> I, I brought the George Strait roots. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Nah, nah, but that, and, and uh, the, dif the, the different influences kind of, we bring it together with sort of like a melting pot, and we take little bits and pieces of what we like and what we don't like, and just throw them all into what he's got, some ideas that he's got, mm -hmm. and then he'll throw in a bass line, like she said, and I have an idea or whatever on the keys, but Eric, Eric is a big part of this too, when we were writing this stuff, and as far as, like, we got some new stuff too, and he's got a bunch of progressions that he's been working on, because he's been studying jazz lately, that's why he's actually not here right now, he's in school, shout out to Eric. Um, Eric the Greek. Eric the Greek, yeah, so he, he was a big part of, of the musical aspect as well. Um... See, one thing I, I really like about y'all is that you don't fit in the box. And especially for, I mean, I would assume I'm the old man here. <laughs> I'm just assuming, by the way. You can't tell, but, you know. <laughs> nah, 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 you good. It's all right. I haven't changed. I haven't changed in 10 years. I can't say that. Um, but you go from, like, a Banger Jones to Inviting You to The Root, which is my favorite song. I gotta say, I love the root. I love the roots. Uh, Shout out yeah. to Dave with that Eric bass. With that. That's but you know, you, you you live in the world today where you're bombarded with information 24/7. You know, social media. You know, 24-hour uh, news cycle. You know, everybody. YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. YouTube yeah. You know, headlines for clicks and all that. And so now you're dealing with a generation of people of kids that that have this short of an attention span. So to get them to sit down and listen to a song and, and really take it in and digest it and, ref and reflect on it is not really something that really um, happens much. You know, people, and especially in the hip hop, that's my old ass talking right now, uh, especially in the hip hop genre where, you know, everybody's doing the trap thing. You know, and you're humming a humming a humming a hum, humming a dab, humming a dab, humming a humming a. It's mumble shit. I'm like, come on. I mean, which it's it's got it's got a place. Of course it it does. Catchy as shit too. Yeah. Did you just dab? Oh shit. You dab on. If I see you dab on stage, I swear to God. Yeah, sure. You're sneezing. You're sneezing in your sleep. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, I was just saying it's got a place, but it's just, it's, it's an overflow of that. Like, everybody just wants to hear that, and it's, it's just saturated. So there's nothing, there's, I just feel like the, that's all there is in hip-hop right now. If somebody, if you were to walk up to anybody on the street, what, what's your idea of hip-hop right now? 
they would be, yeah, we're not, we're, we're not trying to do that. Hold, hold on, Mike. You, you look 22. Are you like 35 or something? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I, I, don't, I, don't, just, I don't either, but you sound, I, I would have said the same thing. It's the same, <laughs> it's the same shit. And, and no, like, like I said, it's got a place, you know, it's dope. We all listen yeah, to I, it. Yeah, we listen, to, I listen to it. Yeah, like, we all do. There's so. nothing intrinsically wrong with it. It's just the fact that it's all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you remember a time, maybe, well, maybe you don't, but, you know, you've done your research. Dad had a uh, record collection and all that, where you had, okay, well, this is what outcasts sound like. Yep. You know, this is what Wu-Tang sounds like. This is what, uh, the roots you know, like. Dr. Dre, The Roots, yes. And nobody said, oh, this is how you're supposed to sound. This is just what they did. Yep. And they found themselves that way. And I feel like you guys are on that same path. Is that something you have, you have to struggle with? In the kind of, for me, because when you're doing something, you don't have an outline or a guide. Yeah, you, yeah, of course not. I mean, how do you check yourself? So sometimes it's like, what the good thing about having a group of us is that I figure all four of us can't be dead ass wrong. So oh, <laughs> I kind of have what? a we can't dead be. wrong. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So I kind of got a little faith in that, but uh, not little, but you know what I mean. No, no, I kind of no, yeah. got faith yeah. in that, but um, it's definitely different because um, I, for me personally, I've never really did things in the standard way. I would always do, I'm like self-taught in everything I do. I just decide I want to do something and I just like figure it out. Mm -hmm. So this was just another one of those things for me. And I've kind of grown comfortable in it. But it didn't happen until like maybe a year ago when we were all like, okay, this is what we're doing. And sometimes it sounds like you don't, you like hear it and you like, what, like, what station would it play on? What, like, so we right. do have struggles. We don't know yeah. like who to shop our music to or exactly. who to go to because like we don't know where it fits. But yeah. that's not definitely not going to stop us from no, doing no. it. But that has yeah. been the, the toughest part because like you said, our music doesn't fit in a box. So we were like, okay, well. We're just gonna keep doing what we're doing, and it, if it picks up, it picks up. Hey, y'all are famous now. I, I wouldn't, no I wouldn't say that, man. We just I, trying to play working. music. We Trust me, I, I did the I did I did the research, <laughs> and Google Magna Carta, and there's a lot of articles, there's a lot of interviews, there's a lot of videos. With a D, not a T. Videos are dope, by the way. Yes, because then well, Jay Z comes on, you're like, ah, who cares? You know what uh, I'm saying? Well. I guess just to address your question earlier. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Please, Derek. Uh, well, I can't do that announcement I feel, voice. <laughs> I still feel like you got to have faith that there are reflective rap fans out there. And just like, if you, and you can pick and choose a certain artists. Like Kendrick's doing a fantastic job. His sure. lyrics are very reflective. Uh, Odyssey is another one of them. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, Odyssey, definitely. Even J. Cole has some good tunes out there. But um, yeah, I, you, you just got to hope that it there's more depth in yeah. hip-hop. Yeah, because you ultimately, when you're making something or you're creating anything, art, as an artist, um, if I was creating art and it was in my room and nobody knew I was doing it, then I don't even know if, if it means the same thing. Yeah. So the no. biggest part of it is who is catching it on the other side, who right. is receiving your message. Yeah. Right. And you don't make the message to, you know, you don't design the message to the crowd. You the message attracts the crowd. So that's kind of like the theory we kind of go based off of. Yeah, like Anderson Pack and the yes. Internet. Those are two other bands yes. that we yeah. look up Anderson to. Anderson Pack, definitely. I saw him like five times during South By because yeah. he was everywhere. Yeah. everywhere. And then and then I saw that Double XL magazine cover, the freshman cover. Y'all see that shit? And he yeah. did not fit in that cover. And I'm like, why? <laughs> There's one out of seven. Yeah. And I'm like, who are these other motherfuckers that... Like think they're rock stars and humming a humming a all day. It's just like there's a there's a I don't know. I don't want to talk. Oh about please, nobody please, work, please, but please, Max. Don't hold back. Tell us how you feel. I mean, if you're in the studio and you writing and you like playing instruments and you like coming up with melodies and coming up with harmonies and you know this is all you or this is all you and your small team and your circle and y'all creating that art like that, like right. that's a lot. That that's to me, that's like so much more valuable. Like that's something that sticks about that. And I think that's what he was on that cover amongst a lot of people that kind of just get a track, write some words, do some yep. ad libs. Yep. And who knows if they even writing the words. So, I mean, there you go. It's like a work ethic thing. Like who really deserves to be at the very front of this cover? Exactly, you know exactly. What I mean? some, somebody probably made up designer somewhere in the factory and said, we need a dude that, that, that goes on top of every 
every other word, and then Kanye gonna put them on, and then done. I mean, and it's a talent, because me, I'm not good at ad libs. So <laughs> I look at them, and I'm like, wow, if there's anything I look up to them for, it's definitely the ad lib game, because it's sick. That makes a song. The stuff in the background nowadays really makes the song. I, that's what I, when I first heard it, that's what I liked. I didn't care for any, any other stuff. I didn't know what a panda well, you was. You don't even know what they know. said. You couldn't understand what he was saying, though. Like, no, I didn't. I couldn't. I couldn't. So uh, to me, it was, I like when he goes, Rah! and I'm like, yes, I like this shit. But I, but I do want to make it clear that I respect everybody that's getting out there oh, brave sure. enough to put themselves out there and share something with the world. So just for that, they got respect from, from me. You know? They do. And they're hustling hard. Yeah, so. it's hustle because this stuff Honestly. is like they wake Shout up. Out to the they don't sleep. You know, right. those people don't sleep. They come and do this all day long for, for us. You know, w- was there a show that really put you guys on the map? You can pinpoint one. I have a couple ideas, but maybe Belmont, Far Side. Yeah, that's what I was about to yeah. say. <laughs> the Far Side one. Yeah, I think that was like our first stepping stone into like into the live scene. Uh huh. Um, now, what was that your first show? No, no that wasn't your first show. Um, that was I, Joe's last show. Yeah, that was our old drummer's last show. Who is now? Who, who is our manager now? <laughs> Joe. He's at. He's our manager. Shout out to Joe. Joe. Shout out to, to Joe. Joe Layton. You out there in New Mexico? I see you, bro. The um, y'all did the X Games. Yeah. Oh that was yeah. Cool. Uh, Charlie Tuna Odyssey. Yeah. Now Jizza. Yeah. The Odyssey yeah. show. Yeah, Odyssey that was show was Wait, was that, we played was, with Odyssey twice too? So. Yeah. Odyssey, like, which one was it? The one that was on Rainy Street? That was an. That was at Empire. That was at Empire. Oh, okay. I missed that one. Shit. Well, and then we we played with them in Idaho as well at Tree Fort Music yeah, Festival. Yeah, Wow. Y'all are touring. and Y'all went to California, too. Yeah. And I read that story. I mean, actually, those stories. <laughs> running out of gas. Let's hear what, let's hear what you mean. Oh, running well, out I of mean, gas. I, I'm just trying to recall. I'm just trying to recall from what I read. Y'all ran out of gas. Uh, y'all had, oh, like, shit. 60 bucks left after your last show, some shit like that. Oh, that was the first time that we went. Yeah, yeah, you got them first stories. Um... <laughs> What was it? The second time we almost ran out of gas too, barely. How'd you run out of gas? You remember that? It's in the middle of the desert. It was. There's a one spot. I must have been asleep. I was right sick. past. Oh, it's in oh. West Texas. It was in uh, West Texas. Yeah. It was watch I out. Ran. I ran. I ran Texas. Oh, and you I said always we should get gas. Yeah, we even Eric stopped at a like, gas nah. station, and we and it was too expensive. We said, Nah. There's we'll a needle. We'll there's the a the needle on one. the car that says when you're you're on E when you're about. I, I never get people who run out of gas when there's something that tells you you are, you're about to run out of gas. Well, I think what it is is they underestimated. I'm gonna say they because I was. You sleep. always do. Ah! You always ah! overestimate. Hey, 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 she, she, she is exactly right. We underestimated. We thought we were good. We thought we was gonna find. They probably had like a quarter tank left and thought they could keep going. And it was no gas for like oh, the next. Oh shit! It was no gas. no gas for like I don't know how many. And and man, so we, somebody walked in the desert and no. Them. Well, well. So we were on zero point some. Like it was our the 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 thing said no. Like it didn't even give us a mileage anymore. <laughs> it started flatlining. The number wasn't even up there anymore, and we were all looking like oh. We're gonna, Who's pushing? We gonna go? Is this we're about, like about to get stuck we in got the a middle car full of, the of gear too. That that doesn't move easily. It's heavy. <laughs> yeah, in the back. But yeah, yeah. Y'all made it back made somehow. It. I, ran I ran Texas. I ran Texas. Yeah, I ran it was, Texas. We I, ran talking, Texas. Yeah. I ran Texas. I ran. That's a city. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a city. Ta- I'm in a town. Sorry. It's a, that's a town. Yeah, it's a little town in West Texas. It's like one road, one gas station, one school maybe. Yeah, all of that, one of them. Like a Churchy's chicken <laughs> yeah. on the corner, you, too. We don't do churches either. Are y'all going on tour again soon, now that the, the album's out? Yeah, we're doing the East Coast, actually, uh, at the end of October. Nice. And we did the, we just came back from, well, not just came back, but we came back from Cali a second time. We went up to Seattle, Portland, uh-huh. um, and that was, that was a, a good run. That was a great run. And so now we're going to East Coast. Hitting the other side. Nice, nice. nice. So y'all doing ACL this year? Yes. See. First time? True. First time. Yes. Second weekend. Uh, yeah. hey. True. Sunday, Sunday at 11.30 a.m. Y'all best come out. That's usually hey. when they put local bands. I, I, which, is, no. which, is, which is cool, but y'all like Yeah, because we're, we're also playing a night show, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, Are yeah. you doing a night show, too? Yeah. yeah. With, with nice. RZA. The, uh, <laughs> oh, yes. That's right. Yeah. yeah that's right. With his new project. That's right. That's right. And then San, San on Sound Fest also. See. Look at y'all. We Seriously, try. Seriously, I... Man... Trying, I'm trying. proud of y'all kids. Now, 
<laughs> we appreciate it, though. Appreciate yes. it, Pops. This, 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 this is your country DJ, uh, Dan, speaking. Thanks, Pops. I appreciate <laughs> no. it. So, uh, one last question, then we got to wrap this up because they got to set up for the next show. Um, circulation, is that how you pronounce it? With a Q? Yeah. Circulation? Yes, exactly. What, how did that... What's what's the there's a story behind every album cover, oh. every album title. Oh. Shout out to Blythe. Blythe doing Blythe. a thing, in, do. doing a oh, thing in Europe, she, killing she a game. She just got on a plane to Spain today. Oh. Uh, no, go ahead, go ahead. What's the story? Yeah. Oh. It's, it's his girlfriend. Blythe, by the way, girlfriend. is Derek's girlfriend. Oh, okay. She's, she's very good at naming stuff. <laughs> do you and have a bunch of nicknames you want to share with us? Uh what she I call mean, you? You gotta me. have at least she ten. Me. Couple, yeah, I mean, I got a couple. I can't tell you got. Uh, <laughs> but uh, either way, yeah, I told her that we wanted to name the album something, um, something to do with a cycle, and uh, and like Megs was talking about a cycle of making music and kind of how we always went through a certain cycle and our old songs had gone through that cycle, so we needed to create new ones. Uh huh. And we had our process down and all that, and then uh, she. We were drinking beers at Circle Always. Brewery. <laughs> Always. And, yeah. There's alcohol involved with like uh, naming shit. <laughs> Weed or alcohol, one of the, or both. Yeah. <laughs> both. Oh, Probably sure. both. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, we were at Circle Brewery and we were looking at the logo and she goes, how about circulation? And, and spell it with a Q. And then I was like, wait, hey, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I got to ask. So she's circulation, great name. And then she goes, I spell it with a Q. Spell it with a Q, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, I, we started thinking about it. We were vibing, and we were kind of drunk, so yeah. It always I works out. Two right. Q's. And you know what? And nobody's going to tell you, this is a whack-ass album name anyway. Well, no, people happen. are calling it circulation. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> See, Figure that's it out. why you're trying, to get, you're trying to get hip with names yeah. and people fuck no, it up. watch out. Circulation. Cir- circulation. Circulation. <laughs> Wow. So we had to capitalize the Q. So, so it could be Sir Q Lation. It's like a split. You got, you yeah. got, you, like a split. You, you got to cater to the lowest denominator. Lowest common denominator yeah. anyway. We got to make Sir that. Sir Next album prints, we're making the Q extra big. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Use like a totally different font to really put it in their yeah. face. Like, this is how you do it. Say our album. How you say it. We have do your homework very before you get up, before you get us on the show. pronounce and spell and say things. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> We'll put it in Latin underneath, like you yeah. know. Like, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Have it like phonetics that, right yeah. under that, yeah, yeah. and if phonetics was just the word circulation. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that could work. That'd be dope. That's, that's kind of cool. Yeah. How you pronounce this circulation? Like the word. Look it up. You know this word. Yeah. It's English. You should know this. Yeah. So album is on iTunes. iTunes is Spotify. 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 Is it on title? Oh, you said it's on title. It's on what? It's on title. Title too? Mm-hmm. Wow. With like a crazy different sound? Is that? Because is that's what they're selling, right? They're saying we got the best sound ever. And I'm like, eh. All right. I mean, they got prints, so. Depends you know, on your speaker. True, 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 true. You know, all right, all right. You won. You won. That's enough. You won. To sign they're, the only, they're the only, uh, I guess, catalog, they, yeah, catalog that plays his stuff, so. All right. I'll give yeah, you that. I got to I'll give you that. Yeah. Congrats, congrats. <laughs> all right, cool. We're going to wrap things up because I think you have to set up soon. Thank you so much. Sure, thank Congratulations you. Yeah, thank you, all the, on all the success. Thank you. And uh, see, ton- uh, tomorrow, KP and the Boom Boom. The show. Zeely, Keeper, Boom Baptist. Yeah, yeah. This should be dope. I got I'm my out. tickets today. And I'm like, yes. yes and yes, then yes. Uh, Keeper on Sunday. Uh, Sunday, right? Yeah, Sunday. Keeper on Sunday. Keeper on Sunday. Yeah. Is that sold out, the Daedalus thing? No, I think they, they might have, like, it's almost. So I'm going to talk to Lainey. And I had Keeper on the podcast last year. Oh. Because I've known, like, I've known Erin since, like, 2002. Yeah, she's oh, killing yeah. it. Like, I, all these girls I've known for a long time. So yeah. it's, it's, it's great to, you know, to see, um, you know, artists grow and put out good music. Yeah. And in a city like Austin where people actually appreciate it and not try to catalog you or put you in the box and be like, oh, exactly. this is hip-hop. I know hip-hop. Hip-hop is that blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. This well, is hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> so all the best to y'all thank wishing you, all the best Appreciate thank you so much for being on the feedback thank you and uh, we're going to sign out thank you for tuning in video will be up hey, man, Carter, Appreciate Carter you. With a D hello not a T come on now make sure you uh, follow
follow the feedback on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, That's all that right. good stuff. Follow us on Twitter. I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. <laughs> go but ahead, we, go ahead. But we begging for some Twitter followers right now. You're begging? Like, wait, 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 hold up, hold up. Now you got to follow us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, hey, hey. And Magna Carta and everything, right? Magna Carta everything. Yeah, you Google it and you get like everything 20 links. Yeah, but yeah. people don't want to follow us on Twitter. I mean, Come through. We're we going to tweet some cool stuff. We're going to keep y'all interested. <laughs> We're going to... Tweet y'all stories. Y'all like story time on there. I want to be. I want to be in the room whenever you name a song or you, you name your your next project, or well, just like well, in, the, in the recording process. Well, wait, what? You got you got an exclusive for me? Uh, no, no. Oh, damn it! I'm gonna go All with right, Derek. The show's Connor. over. It's done. No exclusive for All me. All right, no exclusive. No exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but for real, for real. <laughs> Congrats on all uh, all the success. Keep it going. We need y'all. Something Thank refreshing you. in this hip hop world, in this hip hop city in Austin. Gotta support. Gotta show some love. So, thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Big up. Big up. Mohawk. Shout out to Mohawk. Ten shout years. Out to Mohawk. Yeah. Shout out to Austin. Peace out, world.